All right, welcome to this call on outliers interviews on the question, how is your life perfectly designed for you to be where you're at right now and for you to be doing what you're currently doing? So welcome, Carl. Nice to be here. Yeah. So let's start with the basic question. Of what do you currently do? I am a life coach and personal growth teacher. And I help people live their passion. And I help them basically free up the mind of the things that get in the way of living mm -hmm. their life. And um, I help them find the flow in what they're doing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you gave me a session last year. It was pretty helpful. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you have... You've also invented a bunch of games to help with flow, right? Mm hmm Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are the circumstances that led you to do that? Well, um, I came into this world with a huge amount of passion myself. And... You know, you might see a, a picture of a seagull back yeah. there. Mm -hmm. That's Jonathan Siegel, a book written by Richard Bach. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically about a bird who realized that he didn't want to hang with the flock. He didn't want to spend all day just finding food and shelter. No, life is meant to be lived as an adventure. And he wanted to travel the world. He wanted to fly high up in the sky. He wanted to learn how to do tricks and loop-de-loops and all that to see what he was capable of, of, of doing. And um, when I read that book, I found me in that book. My mom gave it to me when I was about 10 years old. And um, I recognized that, yeah, that's who I am. I want to mm -hmm. live to the fullest, right? It's one of my favorite books. Yeah, just yeah. absolute classic. So I have Jonathan by my side um, at all times, just to remind me, you know. Um, however, I, um, I've had some pretty amazing challenges along my journey, and um, some challenges I could have never had anticipated, and um, so I've had to learn how to work through some of these challenges along the way. And uh, to give you an idea of some of the challenges, um, at a very young age, I realized that I was not keeping up with my, my classmates, that I had some difficulties in learning, mm. and as well as talking. It turns out I didn't learn how to talk until I was about three years old. And um, I started to realize that I had issues with, with my thinking, that I always felt like I was in a fog. It's just cobwebs up there, you know, and just to have that clarity of thought was just very challenging for me. And I also realized that um, I have other cognitive things like uh, dyslexia type of uh, symptoms, memory issues, and uh, several other things. So that actually became um, a very, very big deal for me because I spent years trying to figure out what was wrong with me and how to fix it. Mm. Add to that um, the fact that I was born uh, highly sensitive and also um, I'm very much an introvert. And so to be seen in the world has been an interesting challenge for me. So, so those are some of the challenges I've had as I've pursued my, my passions and whatnot. And I've had some great adventures um, some fantastic experiences um, and incredible uh, discoveries along the way too. So today I'm able to be there for others who may experience some of the same challenges or other challenges on their journey. And when I take a look at my life's history, it's amazing how perfectly laid out it has been for me to be where I'm at today. 
It's amazing. Yeah. It's interesting that the first person that I interviewed, uh, Christina, she was, uh, she's a big Richard Bach fan uh, too. And she's read all, all his books, not just Jonathan Livingston Siegel, but also Illusions and Bridge oh, Across Illusions. Forever. Another favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I love, I love the synchronicities even in this interview series that I, that's happening for me. Nice. So speaking of synchronicity, what are some synchronicities in your life that stood out for you? <laughs> there are so many of them. Yes, okay, I'll, I'll share one with you that um, is one of the more poignant ones. Mm -hmm. um, in my many pursuits, I have uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed what I've gotten myself into. One of them is music. Mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated from high school, my dream was to be uh, the next George Benson on guitar. George Benson, he's got a certain way that he improvises his guitar solos unlike any other, and I wanted to be the next George Benson. And so I dedicated years and years uh, to the pursuit of music. I went through um, three different music schools, uh, two of them in California. So when I graduated from the third music school, I attempted to you know, pursue that as a career out in Los Angeles. And um, the fierce competition along with my, um, we'll call it reluctance to be visible, mm -hmm. get up on stage, have the light shine on me, mm -hmm. um, that created an incredible challenge for me. And so things didn't work out so well. And I ended up living in my conversion van for six months mm -hmm. along the coast of California. And though it was one of the most challenging things I've gone through, when I think about it, it puts a smile on my face because there were some unexpected delights along the way. And so the synchronicity I'll share with you right now is one of those. So I stayed in a place off the coast, uh, about 26 miles north of Santa Barbara, California. And so what I would do is every day I would drive into Santa Barbara to try and get work. And I would just knock on every single storefront. Uh, I would go to the universities. I would do everything and anything I could to try and get work. I couldn't get anything. And I would run out of money almost on a daily basis. And this one particular day, I had had it. I, had, I remember having a list of like 25 potential jobs, but nothing was coming through. And so I'm driving back to my... Uh, where I was staying um, after spending a day at Santa Barbara. And I was just like done. I had $2 to my name and I had just enough gas to get back to where I'm staying. And that was it. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit of a meltdown. Mm -hmm. I was, I remember driving and I just remember, you know, I ended up screaming and crying and pounding on my steering wheel. It's like, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong here? Mm -hmm. I can't take this anymore. And I had a complete meltdown. And I ended up getting off on the wrong exit. Mm -hmm. And as I was turning around, I saw a bookstore. I said, well, I'm here. I have nothing else to do. I might as well go into the bookstore. So I walk in, and one of my favorite authors is there, John Rogers. And he was giving a, a, a book talk. So I sat down and I listened. And his work is uh, very closely related to, to uh, my own. So uh, afterwards, I walked up to him and I said, uh, really enjoyed your talk, but I got a question for you. Why is it that here you are giving these book talks, you've got how many books out there right now, very successful, but here I am living in my van with $2 to my name. What am I doing wrong? And I'll never forget him grabbing my shoulders looking at me right in my eyes. He says, all right, Carl, you got something off the world? I said, yeah. He says, uh, so you, and, and you want to make a difference, right? Yeah. Well, you need the resources to go do your thing, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, ask. Ask. Well, I thought that's what I had been doing, trying to get you know the jobs and whatnot, so I didn't know what he was saying. So he pulls out his wallet, and he takes out a $100 bill, <laughs> puts it in the palm of my hand, 
And he says, now tell me when it's enough. He takes out another $100 bill and he puts it in the palm of my hand. And I'm just like, <laughs> and, 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 and so he put another one in and I said, okay, that's enough. He said, oh, don't be stupid. <laughs> okay. So he took another bill out and another one and another one until he had nothing left in his wallet. Uh-huh. And he gave me a huge bear hug. And he said, now you go talk to that person and that person and that person and that person until you have what you need to go do your thing and make a difference in the world. And I was just left speechless, tears streaming down my face. I had walked in with $2 to my name and mm-hmm. I walked out with $622. Wow. All because I had a meltdown, mm-hmm. got off on the wrong exit, and I ended up at that bookstore. Wow. That's, that's a very deeply moving story. That's amazing. And, and that story and also your story about your brain fog leading to leading you to explore flow, which I would want you to elaborate on that a little bit more. But I wanted to share with you, it reminds me of a, a TED talk that I watched recently uh, called How to Trick Your Mind into Being More Creative. Mm-hmm. And he, he talked about an experiment that was done where uh, students, like teenagers, were given a problem to solve, well, like a creative problem where you have uh, the hands of the clock and one of the hands was, was taken out and they were asked to replace the, one of those hands with anything they wanted. And when they were given no limitations, they were very boring. They would give answers like, oh, a toothpick, you know, the typical you know, replacement. Right. But, when, but when they were given a limitation, like, oh, it has to be a living being, that you have to replace with uh, something to do with a living being. And they would say stuff like, oh, the leg of a dinosaur. And I was like, whoa, how did they come up with that? Huh. So the irony is when they were given the limits, they became more creative. I have a perfect example with that myself. Yeah. Uh, A blues song will have Mm -hmm. a particular blues chord progression. Uh Uh-huh. It's the one chord, which is the home chord. Mm -hmm. Then there's a four chord, which takes you off onto a little bit of a journey. Mm -hmm. Then you hit the climactic chord, which is the five chord. Uh Uh-huh. The one with the most dissonance and tension, and it wants to be resolved back Uh one chord. So it's a one, four, five chord progression. Uh Just three chords, that's it. Uh-huh. Now, you know, there's 12 notes in music, mm-hmm. in the Western music anyway. Yeah. And you would think that if you had all 12 notes to play with, you'd be more creative. Mm-hmm. Paradoxically, by uh, superimposing a constraint like the chord progression, or if I improvise and instead of choosing 12 notes or eight notes, I'm gonna uh, improvise a solo with three notes. And so those are the three like posts that I get to weave my creativity around. Mm. So that constraint actually opens me up to, and necessitates actually, uh, more creativity. Yeah. 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 So it's like the limitations that life throws at us, that that the universe throws at us, are themselves a gift that allows us to be more creative and bloom our, our genius in the world. Yes. Yeah. The beautiful thing. I love paradox for that reason. Yeah, yeah, totally. And really, that's what this interview series is about as well. It's also really the subject of the the, vision, the visionary fiction novel that I'm writing, too. It's about that, too. That's why it's called The, the Gift Field. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Yeah. So, so elaborate more on how did the brain fog motivate you to explore flow and how did you discover the whole existence of flow yep so in music school i I started playing guitar when i was age six Mm -hmm. actually my first good guitar lesson was with my mother she learned how to play a guitar first uh, at the at the same time too which was kind of cool i instantly fell in love with it and so i was in a band or two uh growing up and and, it, it was fun But then when I went to music school, the first one I went to was Philadelphia College of Performing Arts for jazz guitar. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't take long for me to realize that everybody else was getting better, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, I can be extremely passionate about things. And when I am, I, it becomes my everything. And so at one point I was practicing guitar 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And I remember I had to put a strap around my chair, around my chest to keep me up because my back would get sore. And so I just, you know, I was taught to work really hard, mm -hmm. discipline, structure, and that's how you make things happen in this world, right? Well, little did I know that that was the exact opposite of what I really needed. Mm. For myself, with, with my cognitive glitches, if you will, um, there's one part of the mind that I simply call the controller. Mm -hmm. Um, the part, not the total, but part of the thinking mind is in that realm. Um, what some refer to as the ego can be in that realm. But there's also uh, other functionings of the mind and, and body that I fall uh, uh, put into the category of the controller. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you're driving your car and it's raining out or snowing and you mm -hmm. find your uh, hands gripping onto the steering wheel a little extra tight, mm -hmm actually not necessary that's no. the controller taking over trying to keep me safe mm -hmm. so since i've had some cognitive issues growing up and you know learning how to talk and, and things of that nature part of my mind learned how to overcompensate mm -hmm. and without realizing it the more i would practice and make the music happen the more the controller takes over and it would mess up the music and so i would probably make at least a hundred tiny little mistakes in playing just one song. Mm. And again, I wasn't getting better. Yeah, I was learning the scales and I was learning how to improvise and I could almost fake it a little bit. And I've got a nice feel like George Benson. I had that. But you know, the torturous thing for me is that there's, oh, gosh, to be in the flow when you're improvising and you're going for a ride as you're sculpting the music out, um, it is a thrill. And it's, ecstatic at times is mm -hmm. like no better feeling but it was such a tease for me because mm -hmm. every couple of seconds i would be pulled out of flow because mm -hmm. the control would take over uh best way to describe it it's like tourette syndrome mm -hmm. where you know I'll, I'll be in flow and all of a sudden there's the controller part of my mind will it'll click in mm -hmm. it's like almost like a like a, a flinch and sometimes it's literally like a little flinch mm -hmm. and so it was the such a tease because I, I have that sweet groove happening and all of a sudden oh, mm -hmm. mm, might be pulled out uh -huh. and so i spent many years trying to figure out what's going on here mm -hmm. what, 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 what's wrong with me that i can't seem to stay in flow and it's keeping me from that sweet experience right mm -hmm. so i've Gosh, I've read all the books. You know, I've read over 300 books on personal growth, spirituality, health, nutrition, you name it, right? I tried um, supplements, diet, nutrition, exercise, you know, everything I could try to fix these problems, right? Well, it turns out that uh, out of all the problems I have, it really comes down to one thing. I call it my flow glitch. The, what I just described to you, and it mm -hmm. is affecting me in multiple facets of my life, not just in music. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge awakening for me because I realized I didn't have a thousand and one problems. I had one. And that one thing led to insight into what it is to be in flow. Mm -hmm. So that now I can entice that experience and experience it for long durations of time, not only with music, but in other areas of my life. Yeah. What a huge gift. Yeah. And if I didn't have this flow glitch, I wouldn't know anything about flow. I'll yeah. never forget, I had this guitar lesson with this one guy. He was just an amazing guitarist, and I'd watch him all the time, and I finally got a lesson with him. Mm -hmm. And he did this wild solo, and I said, oh, 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 how'd you do that? I don't know. If somebody were to ask me, I know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. And how to entice the flow. Now, there's, yeah. a very, there's a paradox when it comes to flow. If I intentionally try to create it, then the controller part of my mind will tend to take over and it doesn't work. Yeah. So. But there are certain elements that I can create in the environment, both externally and internally, to entice the flow to show. Yeah. And there's almost like a law of physics that starts to come into play. There's a force uh, in nature 
a phenomenon known as entrainment. Mm -hmm. To entrain is to bring one rhythm or pattern into another. Mm. It's what creates uh, connection. I call it yeah. the wave, I call it the wave magnet. Actually, mm -hmm. it brings two things together. And I was in music school. A teacher turned me onto this notion, and it was the biggest aha of my life because it finally gave me my mind something to um, understand so that when the controller in me was really trying to make things happen, I could t now tell the difference between that and when I'm entrained. Mm -hmm. And the, the entrainment will do the work for me. It'll bring me into rhythm if I allow it. If I create the right environment, I will entrain and get in the flow. It's a force of nature that's my best friend. Instead of me doing it, now I'm a conduit for the music or whatever to go through me as I entrain and get yeah. the music. I don't know if that makes any sense, mm -hmm. but that was a huge aha. And so because of my flow glitch, um, yeah, I know a lot about how to entice the, how to entice the flow. Right, because you so, needed it the most. Yeah. 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 It reminds me of the movie Deadpool. Have you seen it? Cool. No, I don't think so. Oh. It's, it's a common theme in every superhero movie, but Deadpool made it so like obvious because um, they were trying to bring out this, turn this ordinary guy into a, a superhero with superpowers. Mm. And, and they were trying to bring out his superpower by deliberately uh, torturing him and while giving him their, their chemical, the genetic mix uh, formula as well. But they knew that wasn't enough. They needed uh, an environment for it to 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 bust out. So like they were they were using like many different torture methods, and it's kind of a little bit funny too in a morbid way. And and then finally like his uh, his superpower came out when the entire building was destroyed, and it turns out his superpower was kind of like immortality, where he cannot be destroyed. Mm. Like, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing to know that um, some of our biggest struggles mm -hmm. can be our biggest gifts, not yeah. just a concept, but as a reality. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of practice at what I like to call turning my crap into fuel for new growth. Mm -hmm. Just like nature does. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes the, the fire, the storm, mm -hmm. earthquake, even dirt itself, which is basically rotten decay, but mm -hmm. plant the seed, create the right environment, that crap of the soil turns into fuel for new growth. Yeah. Nature can do it, I can do it. So mm -hmm. the challenge I have, um, you know, my initial reaction, I need to always honor. So if I'm upset, scared, lonely, I'll allow myself to be there. Yeah. But I love, I love playing the game of uh, like the reframe, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm up for it and I want to play the game and I like turning things into a game. It makes it a little bit more fun to play with. Um, then I will reframe that challenge and it will turn into fuel for new growth, new creations, new insights, and it can be endless. Mm -hmm. Endless creations from that grit, you know, the grit to pearl type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I'm rather proactive with that because I know it's a wonderful game to play. Again, as long as the first thing, though, is to allow myself to find, you know, wherever I find myself, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I can take that energy of the upset, the fear, the anger, frustration, and transform it into fuel for new growth, if and when I feel like it and I feel ready. Yeah, like a forest fire, right? Clears the ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. growth. Exactly. yeah and then there's new growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and, and this is why I created my Facebook group, Phoenix Awakening, because that's the whole theme of the Phoenix, that the fire that creates a new birth. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And this is the year of the Phoenix, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really cool to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like that, not only for myself individually, but when I see the current climate in our in our world, mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there are some folks out there, a lot of people who are afraid, uncertain, mm -hmm. our future and whatnot. And, you know, and I am too from time to time. And then I find myself 
feeling a sense of boldness, almost like never before, like, okay, mm -hmm. I have to step up to the plate and really um, do my thing. I've been mm -hmm. wanting to do certain things for a long time, like be on camera. As I yeah, said, exactly. For the recording, you know, just to be visible is kind of a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And I found myself more willing and able to, to do that. Like right now, normally I would say, mm, no, no, let's not be on camera. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Okay, let's just turn it on and let's have some fun here. So exactly. people waking up. Mm -hmm. That's the most exciting thing to be witnessing right now. People yeah. are up. And I find that happening in me. Some of the clients I'm working with, other coaches I've talked to, they're seeing the exact same thing. Um, that's it for me. That That is the gift of what's going on right now. People waking up, stepping into their vision, their passion, and you know, wanting to make a little difference or a big difference in this world. Mm -hmm. That That's yeah. perfect contrast for, uh, uh, you know, turning things into fuel for new growth. Totally. That's the time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on this call, Cal. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. And I think that we could talk forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome.